kids. 12,000 Cossacks expressed their wish to come to Yugoslavia, and President Milosevic does not intend to reject their assistance. Now coverage of the NATO strikes on Yugoslavia from state-run radio television Serbia News in Belgrade. This portion, which was recorded at 1.30 p.m. Eastern and translated at C-SPAN in Washington, D.C., is about a half hour. You are watching primetime news of television Serbia. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. President of the Republic, Slobodan Milosevic, sends greetings to his people for the upcoming Easter holiday, noting, to all of the citizens of Orthodox faith, I wish happy Easter and peace, progress and happiness to all of the people of Yugoslavia and all of our peoples. The President of the Republic, Slobodan Milosevic, received today the President of the Italian Communist Party, Armando Kosciutta. The guest from Italy conveyed to President Milosevic the efforts of his party towards the stopping of this aggression condemned by the freedom-loving world. He stressed that the people of Italy have expressed undivided opposition to the NATO attacks on the territory of the neighboring Yugoslavia, expressing their friendly feelings and solidarity with our people. President Milosevic stated that our country defends not only itself, but also the right of all of the people for a free and autonomous development and defends Europe from the U.S. hegemony. This fact reaches more and more citizens of Europe, despite the lies of the Western media that together with the armed battle are waging media war on our country. The struggle of the Yugoslav people should be shared by all people exposed to similar problems and challenges. That's why the example of our people has a decisive role in the struggle of the progressive forces against the dictates of force, said President Milosevic. The neighborly relations and cooperation between Yugoslavia and Italy are in the interest of both countries. We would like this to be very important to the Italian government and more important than the membership in NATO, a militant organization aimed at U.S. hegemony in Europe and the world, stressed President Milosevic in his discussion with the leader of the Communist Party of Italy, Armando Kosciutta. The President of the Republic, Slobodan Milosevic, sent greetings to the citizens of Yugoslavia regarding the upcoming Easter holiday, stating to all of the citizens of Orthodox faith, I wish peace, happiness and progress to all Yugoslav citizens and all of our peoples. President Milosevic received today two Russian delegations visiting our country. There was a delegation of Russian generals and one delegation of Kazakh atamans. He had brief friendly discussions with both of those delegations. President of the Republic Slobodan Milosevic received today the Cyprus Parliament President Spiros Kiprianu. Stressing that his arrival to our country was motivated by desire to express his support to our friendly nation in these days of a mindless NATO bombardment, Spiros Kipriano condemned this criminal act against Yugoslavia and against international peace. President Milosevic thanked to the friendly people of Cyprus and to the President Kipriano personally for this support. The entire freedom-loving world is aware of the danger of this aggressive NATO policy not merely for our people, but all of the freedom-loving countries around the world, stated President Milosevic. In Yugoslavia, we are defending the law, justice and freedom from U.S. hegemony. The decisive defense against the American might and our defense from this technically superior enemy confirms that even at this historic stage will prevail the policy of peace, equality, progress and freedom for the people of the world over the policy of conquest. Yugoslavia will continue with its peaceful policy and will resist every aggressor that wants to attack it, stated President Milosevic. This meeting was also attended by the President of the Citizens' Council, Mjor Miminic, and the Federal Minister of Foreign Affairs, Zivadin Jovanovic. On the occasion of the greatest Christian holiday Easter, President of Serbia, Milan Milatinovic, sent greetings to the Serbian Orthodox Church and all of the Orthodox people, with the wish for the people of Serbia in this very difficult times managed to defend their freedom and live in peace and harmony. Easter greetings were also sent by the President of the 
Serbian Assembly, Dragan Tomic, and the President of the Government of Serbia, Mirko Marjanovic. The federal government, presided by Momir Bulatovic, proclaimed an immediate humanitarian assistance to the most affected areas of the country in the amount of 20 million dinars. The Federal Ministry of Health and Human Services, together with the Government of Serbia and the Yugoslav Red Cross Organization, will immediately implement this decision. The Federal Government agreed to the annex of the agreement with the Russian Federation regarding accrediting goods, which creates all conditions for all of its implementation. And the request of the Chamber of Commerce and other government bodies, the export-import policy has been liberalized. Special quotas are maintained for goods considered to have special special strategic significance for the defense of the country. All other goods are subject to peacetime regulations for foreign trade. The Serbian government, at the session presided by Mirko Marjanovic, discussed the overall production, export and the economy under the present conditions. It was stated that all of the government measures for wartime operations are implemented according to the set plans. The full synchronization and unified action of the state organs and economic entities have secured economic stability, stable exchange rate and good market supply. The successful implementation of these measures contributes significantly to the defense of the country and meets the citizens' needs. The spring farming activities are being conducted successfully. Especially important is the high morale of all of the employees who are devoted fully to their tasks. From Moscow, we hear that the Federal Assembly Duma of Russia greeted with applause the decision of the representatives of Russia and Belarus have passed a decision on creation of a union with the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. This announcement was made by the President of Duma, Gennady Seleznyov, after his meeting with the Russian President Yeltsin. The Russian President Yeltsin is determined not to let the Americans to conquer and occupy Yugoslavia. President Yeltsin expressed the unified political will against in surrendering Yugoslavia to some NATO characters. If the international community doesn't accept Moscow's proposal for peace, we will undertake other measures, but the aggression and conquest are inadmissible. The West will have to accept its mistake, because this war machinery never works against internal problems of other countries, stated President Yeltsin at today's meeting with the other regional managers. This is a test of the value of the Western democracy. The imposition of principles of force is impossible. NATO may frighten Europe with its attack. But ultimately, we will have to sit at the negotiation table, stated President Yeltsin. In the state parliament, Gennady Seleznov announced also today that President Yeltsin agreed to join Yugoslavia to the Federation of Russia and Belarus. There are already several concrete measures. And President Yeltsin has spoken on the phone to the President of Belarus, Lukashenko, who actively supports the idea of this union of three states. The Russian ministries have received directions to prepare documents for this alliance between Russia, Belarus and Yugoslavia. Gennady Seleznyov, after meeting Yeltsin, stated in Duma that he has informed the President Yeltsin on the details of the situation in Yugoslavia. Duma will also discuss the manner in which the Russian media covered the NATO aggression in Yugoslavia. The decision is underway, according to the statement, that some Russian TV channels, for example NTV, will be sharply criticized for practically siding with the aggressor. The reasons are plenty for this displeasure, unlike the majority of stations that give objective picture of the Yugoslav events, show the civilian destruction and suffering by this furious aggression. NTV, according to the Yugoslav journalist from Moscow, often comes out with unchecked information, speculations and rumors, and video materials served by the propaganda machine of the aggressor. The Russian Foreign Minister Igor Ivanov stated that the decision on the admission of Yugoslavia to the Federation of Russia and Belarus confirms the consistent policy of Russia for a peaceful resolution of Kosovo and its role in the world and European affairs. At the press conference, Ivanov was asked by a foreign journalist if after this alliance the bombing of Yugoslavia should be understood as an attack of this union. He responded, the military assault on Yugoslavia will be over before we form the Federation of Russia, Belarus and Yugoslavia. Ivano sharply criticized NATO striving to impose some kind of international tutelage to Kosovo, citing the Charter of the UN.
The latest public opinion in Moscow shows that majority of Russians consider that Moscow has to give to Belgrade the most sophisticated weapons in this situation. At Russia's request, the session of NATO and Russian Council scheduled for April 15th in Brussels has been postponed. Because of the brutal aggression of NATO, Russia has terminated its relations with this alliance, recalling its representative from Brussels. Russia has condemned NATO's bombing of Yugoslavia as a barbaric act against the sovereign country and people. In Geneva, at the session of the Human Rights Commission of UN, 43 non-governmental organizations from 32 countries adopted a joint declaration demanding immediate cessation of the NATO bombing and aggression against Yugoslavia. The Italian Foreign Minister Lamberto Dini stated in Luxembourg that the President of the Federal Republic of Milosevic is the only person to talk to about the peaceful resolution of Kosovo, stressing the need for an immediate renewal of the political dialogue. He, dis he decisively asked for an immediate cessation of the barbaric bombing of Yugoslavia by NATO. Minister Dina stated for the first time openly that the last version of the peace proposal from Rambouillet made it even more remote that such agreement would be signed by the Yugoslav government. The proposal was phrased in a way that was unacceptable to Belgrade. In addition, Dini said, we don't have the version with the additions that was signed by the Kosovo Albanians, who insisted all along on a referendum on independence after three years. While this was not a part of the Rambouillet proposal, a certain phrasing supported that direction, which was certainly unacceptable by Belgrade, specified the head of the Italian diplomacy, Lamberto Dini. In the Parliament of Portugal, the debate on the NATO aggressors on Yugoslavia turned into an uncommon scandal. The presiding had to stop the session because of the replica of the Prime Minister and the opposition who wanted a complete explanation of the aggression against Yugoslavia. The citizens in the galleries, unsatisfied with the explanation, rose from their seats, placed targets on their chest, chanting, we don't want war, we are for peace. Last night's attack on Zasta factory in Kragujevac injured 124 workers, causing huge material damage. Protesting this barbaric attack on the factory, several thousand employees gathered today, sending an appeal to the people of the NATO countries. The fascist NATO alliance sowed death last night in Kragujevac. The criminals attacked Zastava factory from Kragujevac. The missiles last night around 1.13 a.m. destroyed some of the most vital facilities in this oldest industry in Serbia. Production plans for passenger vehicles, transport vehicles, the smelting facility and many other plants. We don't have the energy plant Zastava anymore. More. A plan that provided energy for the factory and heated 11,000 households in Kragujevac as well as hospitals, schools and kindergartens. Everything that had been created by generations of Kragujevac people in the past 146 years in this factory has been destroyed by these NATO criminals last night. The bloodthirsty aggressor attacked this factory. Even though these criminals knew that the workers of Zastava will defend this factory with their own lives up until this moment moment we have 124 injured people of whom at least 10 of them have been more heavily injured and they were immediately transferred to the intensive care unit after they were given the immediate assistance on site. Zastava factory was visited today by the Minister of Industry from the Republic, Luka Mitrovic, Branislav Blažić, Minister of Environment, and Mr. Slobodan Tomović. The site of this attack in Kragujevac Zastava was also seen by representatives of 13 world news agencies. The workers from this factory, their families and citizens of Kragujevac gathered once again in protest against the criminal bombing of the NATO fascists who destroyed 
In one night, everything the generations had built over the past 146 years. This silent march of a river of people visited the production plants that had until last night their workplaces, livelihood and future for 38 workers and their family members and for about 60,000 more employees in auxiliary production plants in Serbia. Evil missiles of NATO aggressors bombed last night the Yugopetrol fuel reservoirs in Smederova in the industrial zone of this city on Danube. The firefighting and medical teams reacted instantaneously, fighting the rage of flames throughout the night. Fortunately, there were no human losses except for minor injuries to three workers on duty. At 1 a.m., four missiles hit the village Pričević near Valjevo. Material damage is huge. Fortunately, we don't have human losses. One of the consequences of this evil attack on civilian people was also the breaking of power lines between Valjevo and Pričevići. The electric power company teams have been attempting recovery throughout the day. They anticipate that soon it will be operative and all of the villages in the region will have electricity again. So far, this third attempt of this century to destroy the freedom and autonomy of Yugoslavia in days that faithfully remind us of the sufferings from the beginning and the end of Second World War shows that the power of united people can stop even an enemy many times mightier than them. In the last 15 days, the aggressor has engaged about 600 planes of US, British and other NATO murderers, of which 450 are combat planes that have committed more than 3,000 sorties, throwing thousands of tons of explosives. There have been 20 other combat carriers and many other auxiliary ones that have sent more than 450 cruise missiles. Even if before the aggression they conceded that Yugoslavia is an opponent deserving respect, the aggressor headquarters in Brussels, commanded by Washington and London, did not expect this resistance or the losses they suffered. Our anti-aircraft defense is acting more and more successfully. Each of our losses they have paid dearly, and they'll pay them even more. The popular courage, dedication and readiness to protect our freedom at all costs and the success of our defense are reflected especially in the high morale and the full unity of our armed forces with all of the social strata. United with their army, people are determined to defend and to overcome this war on their country. The press office of the Pristina Corps announced that an artillery attack from the territory of Albania happened on the border station Košara. Accompanied by a simultaneous attempt of a larger group of armed terrorists from Albania to penetrate the territory of Yugoslavia, border units energetically defended against this aggressive attack, destroying the terrorist group. The state border remains secure. This is a drastic example of border violation by the Albanian regime and cannot be seen as anything but an aggression against our country. The Yugoslav army will persist in defending its borders and will protect the territorial integrity of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. All of the responsibility for widening of this war in the Balkans and this bloodshedding will be with the Republic of Albania, the terrorist protégés, but also those who support them, states the announcement of Pristina Corps. The President of the Cyprus Parliament, Spiros Kiprianu, visited Alexinac and Chupria after surveying the damage of the NATO bombing, stated, I deeply regret this crime of the self-appointed moral apostle of the world. More in this report. The President of the Cyprus Parliament, Spiros Kipriano, accompanied by the President of the Citizens' Council of the Federation, Milo Mirminic, the Foreign Affairs Minister, Živadin Jovanovic, the President of the Foreign Affairs Council, Ljubiš Aristic, and the Republican Minister of Citizens, Dejan Kovacevic, visited the ruins of this house and apartment buildings in which, according to the latest data, there were 13 citizens of Alexinas who died. Deeply stirred by this image, Kipriano stated, Words are unnecessary, you see it all. I express my condolences and concerns. I immediately have to say that there is no other solution but a peaceful one. 
the bombing and the aggression should stop immediately so that we can begin a peaceful process. To the Fund for Assistance for Alexei Natsky, Priyanu contributed personally with 2,500 francs. The distinguished guests visited the town of Chupria on Morava, targeted by the NATO criminals, confirming on the side the evil brought by these murderers. Mr. Kipriano was especially interested in the details of this criminal attack. We will do our best to help, because we also have lived through similar moments in our history. Mr. Kipriano encouraged the families who have lost their houses with the words, be courageous, you will build new houses. What has happened here is undeniable. In the discussions between the President of the Assembly of the Council of the Republic of Yugoslavia, Serjan Bozovic, and the Vice President of the Parliamentary Council of Europe, the Ukrainian academic Boris Olejnik, condemned the brutal aggression of U.S. and its satellite countries on sovereign and independent Yugoslavia. Ukraine and its people are with you, stated Olejnik, stressing that it is equally important to have this media war against the Western media that spread lies, misinformation, manipulations about the aggression on a sovereign country like Yugoslavia. This brutal aggression on our country violates the highest Christian principles regarding the respect of holy sites, stressed in this discussion, Serjan Bozovic. The editorial of Radio Television Serbia aired last night in which we expressed our awareness that we are the next target of the aggressor has already received a reply from Brussels. Reuters, citing NATO sources, stresses that the declaration of NATO on a pending bombardment of Serbia TV has been known, but adds that this reaction of our television has caused a great confusion among the NATO members. Political and military leaders of NATO disagreed as to whether the alliance plans to attack Yugoslav TV as part of its bombing campaign against the Kosovo crisis, Stasis Reuters. Few hours after the NATO spokesman declared that the Yugoslav Yugoslav information system is a legitimate goal, another official of NATO had a contradictory statement. Let's be clear, we don't love Serbian TV, but it is not a military target. According to Reuters, this official of NATO clearly denied that NATO plans to bomb Serbian TV or express the ultimatum that Serbian TV give airtime to Western media for their program, as had been suggested by the military representative of NATO, David Wilby, at the Brussels briefing. Reuters also cites the Serbian TV offer to give to NATO countries the six hours of airtime if those countries are ready to give the same time to the Serbian TV, with the comment, maybe we would need only six minutes for your six hours. A senior NATO diplomat in Brussels didn't want to comment on this question, but another one said, so far we haven't heard of this, because we were surprised that the television of Serbia is not on the official list of targets. The General Secretary of NATO, Solana, stated in a TV interview that he doesn't want to discuss what constitutes a military goal. Reuters stresses that NATO debates behind closed doors about how to silence TV Serbia, noting that some voices consider it legitimate target, while others disagree. As it was stated, NATO Alliance is furious by the reports that NATO bombing has caused exodus from Kosovo and by the claims of Belgrade that there is no ethnic cleansing. At any rate, all of this to do around Serbian TV and the attempts to stop its operations clearly prove that for NATO and its allies, truth is the greatest enemy, as well as that this until recently unanimous alliance shows signs of internal dissent. In the government of the Republic of Serbia, there was a meeting today of the main editors of Serbian media and the Minister of Information of the Republic of Serbia, Aleksandar Vucic. It was noted that the media are very important during such an aggression, media that daily pass the test of professionalism and patriotism. The aggressors are surprised by this unified defense of the army and police, as well as of all the media, regardless of their conceptual differences. It is no wonder that they want to destroy them at all costs and stop the truth about their failure. The futile flyers and all other attempts of the aggressors to psychologically affect our people and our state prove the victory of truth and the high professionalism of all Serbian media. The main editors of the media, together with their staff, decided to continue defending the fatherland, both with their words and their lives. Regardless of the threats of the NATO aggressor, these media people will persevere 
clear in their truthful, timeless and objective information of our people and the world about the evil attacks against our country. The action of Defense of Belgrade bridges with living shields continued this evening. This is what our TV team recorded on Branko's bridge. A site for our resistance, for our thought, is everywhere in this country of ours, Yugoslavia, whether it's a bridge, a street, a square, a marketplace, a coffee shop. Because for the first time in our history, we have a faceless, invisible enemy. We don't know what they want from us. At the Panchevo Bridge, on the 17th evening of the bombing of Yugoslavia, gathered citizens from the Belgrade neighborhoods from the left and right side of Danube to protect with their bodies this vital link from the attacks, from the air attacks of the NATO aggressors. Just as previous nights, they were joined by many public personalities from politics and culture, as well as by music bands. My name is Kozina Drago. I'm a retired man from Zrenjanin. I traveled for three hours by bicycle to get to this bridge. Throughout the world, there are more and more diplomatic initiatives to find a political solution of the crisis caused by the NATO aggression against Yugoslavia. There are many appeals for immediate stop of the attacks and warnings of the danger they represent both for Yugoslavia and the region as a whole. In Skopje, the cabinet of the Ministry of Defense announced that a professional Macedonian soldier lost his life while at the border area towards Yugoslavia. The soldier was fired upon, as it was announced, by an unidentified person that had been warned previously to stop. These incidents have become increased since many Albanians attempt illegal entry into Macedonia and often fleeing Macedonian patrols leave their guns. The most influential Skopje daily, New Macedonia, which is close to the government, published today a dramatic editorial titled The Strategy of Macedonian Suicide, stressing that Macedonia is asked to commit suicide. The paper stresses that the airplane democracy, played for days on the territory of the sovereign Yugoslavia, is spreading throughout the Balkans as a domino, inexplicably. The commentator of New Macedonia is concerned that in this way the West may be preparing the ground for changing the demographic image of Macedonia so as to melt it more easily into Greater Albania. Within the framework of the contact group and the G8 countries, Currently, is being considered the latest initiative for a political resolution of Kosovo. Announced today, Kosto Simit is the Greek Prime Minister. He expressed hope that in the next few days there will be the first results from this dialogue leading to a stop of the bombing. Greece has, from the beginning of the Kosovo crisis, consistently sought a political solution of this problem, supporting all initiatives that would lead to peace in Kosovo and the region as a whole. My generation had a good fortune to witness the patriotism of the Yugoslav people during their heroic struggle against the fascists in the Second World War and their determination to fight Stalinist threats. If I were on Clinton's or Blair's place, who have never experienced the war, nor do they know the history and the mentality of these people, I would be much more careful, stated Karolas Papuyas, the president of the Foreign Policy Council of Greek Parliament and former foreign minister in the government of Papandreou. In his interview for the Daily Tainea, judging the situation in Balkans as a grave regional danger for Europe, Papoulias spoke about the aggression as a big mistake. Only a dialogue between President Milosevic and the leader of the Kosovo Albanians, Ibrahim Rugova, can bring us back to the negotiation table and stop the tragic bombardment of Yugoslavia, concludes Karolas Papoulias in the interview for the Greek daily Tanea. More than two million Deutsche Marks is the value of the first contingent of humanitarian assistance, which has been collected by the Friendship Society of the Greeks towards Yugoslavia. There are more than 15 planes with medicine and with food, medicine especially, which is high priority for our hospitals. It should come to our destroyed cities within the next week. This is for all of the people who have been left without homes.
Chinese media report about the extinction of the civil murder by NATO, stressing that this is a merciless attack primarily of civilian targets. Chinese public is completely abhorred by this brutal aggression against this freedom-loving and peace-loving Yugoslavia. The media point out that the fleeing refugees from Kosovo are direct consequence of NATO. No lies of this propaganda machine from Brussels can hide that. Jemin Jinao says that the Yugoslav government has called upon Kosovo refugees to go back to their homes. The United States of America are conducting war against a sovereign state that is not threatening the safety or the interests of the U.S. This is written in Herod's the Israeli paper. Kosovo is the cradle of Serbian culture, is part of a sovereign state of Yugoslavia. The conflict was caused by Albanian separatists seeking independence. The terrorists at first didn't want to sign a document for Rambouillet, but finally they did it under the American threat that unless they do so, they will not get the help and assistance in military means. The aggression of NATO is not stopped with the false explanation that Kosovo Albanians are expelled from Kosovo. You forget that the goal of the separatists is to chase Serbs out of this um, environment. Financial Times from Britain is pointing to the dissent within NATO, and there is a greater and greater confusion among the politicians who simply have very difficult time accepting the opinion of Clark. Financial Times, from the seat of the Western capital, expresses that the liberal West has a fiasco in the Balkans. If the goal of these air attacks was to force the government of Yugoslavia to accept the so-called plan of Rambouillet, to decide on the situation in Kosovo. This war has been lost. Kosovo and Metohija are part of Serbia, and this war is an aggression against a sovereign country that really violates the charter of United Nations. A journalist of the British Independent sends another report from Pristina against the lies of NATO that their bombs had not destroyed this city. The ruins of Pristina are also the place where truth dies. This reporter says, if there are lies, these damning lies and statistics, now the Kosovo war has come to these damning lies. Now we have also accusations that the Serbs from Pristina have not been bombed by NATO, that they have themselves destroyed their houses. You have to be forgiven the thought that this world has gone mad, says this journalist. He also witnesses the destruction of Pristina and the brutal attacks of NATO, the destruction of post office of the shopping center and the killing of civilians. Only a NATO bombardment could have destroyed this city and turned it into dust. Only missiles from air could have created these craters in the ruins. Not a single Serb could create this dishonest scene in few hours. He is also sending the message to the Serbian people to tell their story to the world. And thus he concludes his report the journalist from Independent. The escalation of the civil aggression against Yugoslavia shows more and more the differences within the alliance has been stressed by many Western analysts. Already we are talking about two different poles. Within one of them, there are the Americans and the British. The rest are in the other poles. The Europeans are quite clear now that the essence of the American plan to rescue Kosovo is to destroy the sovereign Yugoslavia in order to hide the mistakes and the dissent within NATO. In order to save whatever can be saved, the NATO goes towards a dirty propaganda war, many lies and disinformation. The West is already creating the greatest list of the lies within NATO. Some of them, they say, this is the spokesperson Jamie Shea in Brussels. Others think it's Tony Blair. But most of them agree that this is Robin Cook, who is the main culprit. The American General Wesley Clark is trying to pacify his public with the discovery that his country has decided to degrade Serbia. The professor of political sciences from Milwaukee University and one of the experts for nuclear arms, Mr. Thomas, stresses that this aggression against Yugoslavia violates international law and the Charter of the UN. This aggression has violated the charters of NATO as well as the Helsinki declarations that guarantee the borders of European countries. One of the main problems is that the so-called agreement from Rambouillet also violates the Vienna Convention against international on international law that prohibits blackmailing of state to sign an agreement. And Serbia, indeed, was asked to sign an agreement under the threat of NATO bombs and missiles. 